Welcome back to another episode of Real Chumps, where chatting about movies feels like hanging out with friends. I'm your host, Marcel, and with me as always is my co-host, Danny. This week we are discussing the 2023 series Poker Face, created by Ryan Johnson and starring Natasha Lyonne and a ridiculously stacked cast that has so many things happening here. So many. Um, this is just so good. Uh, I have the question of the day. Okay. Um, when was the first time you actually gambled? Have we? Did I ask? I don't remember if we talked. We talked about him, but I don't remember if you'd gambled. Yeah, I mean, I've only done like casino slots. I've never done like. I've well, never what set was up it a like? table. What was it? What was the first time you did it? Um. Was it like with a homie? Was it with like whatever? I'm, I'm pretty sure. When was it? I think it was. I think I, I was 21. Yeah, I was 21. I had gone down to Vegas with a buddy of mine, um, for like the weekend. We like hit a club or something, and then like we just put a couple. It wasn't. It wasn't anything like great. It was just like <laughs> it's oh, never look, great. I'm 21. I can do this now, and then just boom. Uh, I'm pretty sure though, like when we were young, my dad at one point like threw in a coin, and he's like, "Hurry, hurry!" Oh, yeah. And then and then he's like, "Run!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll see if you win anything. That's so funny. Uh, um, I the first time I actually gambled was actually three years ago, I think. Two, two years ago, okay. uh, I was on a work thing, and I said I did blackjack. Literally lost more money than I wanted to yeah. in that sitting, and I was like, never again. Uh, there, there was this one time I was in, in Vegas for work, and my coworker and I, we had just finished like our meetings, etc. And she had talked. I mean, we were we were probably like twenty seven ish at this time, and she had talked about how she had never gambled. And there was this guy behind us who was also at this conference. And he's like, you've never gambled? And we're like, yeah, we've been. And she's like, yeah, I've never gambled. I'm like, oh. And she's like, and he literally just pulls out his wallet, pulls out a crisp $100 bill. And he's like, on me, go, do whatever you want. And she's like, no, I can't take this. And I'm like, no, you definitely can take this. <laughs> like, take it. And then, uh, and then she tries to give it back. And he's like, no, no, no take it and so she's like all right fine and then like we went to like the i think she we i think she did no i think we just did it in the slots now that i think about it we just she just spent the rest of the night just doing slots slots and, oh we, we like lost it all in like 20 minutes but uh in on slots I have, a, I have a friend who loves craps oh really okay he like what i think i asked him a while back i was like what do what would you do if we were like like what if we didn't if you didn't have a family or kids like well he's like oh i know he's like i'd be a bum in vegas <laughs> losing all my money <laughs> and just sit there i was just like okay um the, it's just anyways just wanted to to to, to talk about that yeah. let us know in the comments uh if you what your if you have a memory about uh slots let us I, know if you've actually won like any, any I, good money i know a guy who won 10 grand Really, with the Wheel of Fortune, this guy is like one of the luckiest guys in the gambling. He was a, he was in a, a client video of mine, and they talk about him is always him and, and his gambling and and whatever. And he's always, you know, probably losing a lot of money, but also has made a lot of money too. Ten grand. I wonder, know, I wonder how much he. It was they, they they like him and this other guy put in both and put five grand or whatever, or no no. I can't remember how much they put in. I think, yeah, I think both of them was five grand or 2,500 or something like that. They put in a total of five grand or something. And then I'm like, okay. Uh, and then uh, I did it, but I was like, that's how it is for some people, you know? They're just lucky. Lucky like that. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner, my guy. That's right. All right. <clears throat> Poker face, dude. Let's give, give me the breakdown of this show. Okay, so if you haven't seen it, one, you should. Uh, two... <laughs> Poker face, uh, it's it's follow it, it's Ryan Johnson. We've talked a lot about Ryan Johnson. See this episode. Uh, go, oh, sorry, I, this is more for visual. I should say, it. go uh, review our uh, knives out video uh, movies and glass onion and glass onion uh, because you'll know. Yeah, we we love Ryan Johnson here at, at Real Chips, but this this show follows uh, Charlie, who has this incredible skill or ability to know when someone is lying. The bullshit meter. The bullshit meter, she calls it, yeah. Um, and she fall, She uses this and falls victim of... No, nah, it doesn't fall victim. She she gets entangled in some mafia stuff. And 
she goes on the run because they're after her. And that is, that's all I want to say. Like, she goes on the run, and we have 10 episodes of her uh, on the run trying to hide away from the mafia. But in each episode, she is pulled into a situation where she has to fall, solve a, a murder. So this is a mystery. this is a, um, I would say, an unconventional uh, crime procedural. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm all for it. It is Ryan Johnson's like classic subverting expectations on all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And I'm freaking here for it. Look, Ryan Johnson, it, he obviously has a love for for like murder mysteries, right? For, yes, yeah. Um for the genre. He and we talked a, in detail about his ability to subvert expectations. And I think when when I first saw the trailer for this, I was like, "Oh, this is cool, another murder mystery." Uh, oh, it's Ryan Johnson. Great. And immediately I'm like, how is he going to subvert my expectations? I'm excited. I'm 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 I want to know how this guy fools me. You know what's so funny is I didn't even like I just remember I saw a whole bunch of like headlines saying that this is like one of the best TV shows for the summer slash like for this year. Emmys just came out and this has been nominated. She got best actress. Um, well deserved. Natasha Leone is incredible. Oh, the woman's her voice. <laughs> Well, alone. I, I was reading. I'd, I had read uh, a a piece from GQ about uh, about like the 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 costuming um, of of it all, and the way I'm gonna pull it up. I, okay, you pull it up because I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. Because like, it. Uh, how many Emmy nominations do you remember? I think three. Three. That feels like way too low. Some yeah. other. I think Andor probably got. I think Andor got more. Did it? Um, I, don't know. I remember one show that I didn't expect. Andor did not get enough, actually. You're right. That's uh, what movie got a ton. There, or, or sorry, TV. Sh- I mean, t- what TV show got? There was a TV show that like got. I'm like, wow, they got like good job for them. It was it might have been a Succession, but I, anyways. Um, but I remember this getting a lot of praise and thinking, oh, you know what? I'm gonna, and then I realized that it was Ryan, uh, Ryan Johnson, and I was like, oh man, I gotta watch this, and I binged it. Um, okay. And one of the first things that happened in the second episode was I totally – like I'm like, of course this would happen. Of course this would happen, uh-huh. which is that it would be completely different than from the first one. And then you get to the second episode, and then you get to all the episodes and you realize he freaking – this guy. He's so good. Here's a question for you. Were, were you able to to tell like which were directed by Ryan Johnson versus the other directors? Um, I think if I watched it for the second time, I could. Okay. But there's definitely, I mean, I definitely knew the one that Natasha directed. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt, I definitely felt there was a difference, okay. uh, at least to a, to a degree. She did the one with the, uh, the, 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 the special effects. The special effects, right? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a really good episode. It's a great episode. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh. But I w- I actually was pleasantly surprised that I didn't feel like it was very like that they had a they did a good, like the directors mm-hmm. did a good job yeah yeah um for the ones that were not being directed by Ryan Johnson right 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 um here I found this this article here's here's how Jason Diamond of GQ describes Natasha Leone okay, okay. Give it. now now this this article is titled Natasha Leone's poker face character is TV's best dressed drifter <laughs> which I love that. Uh, this whole article, Classic GQ. This article is just focused on her, on her uh, yeah, wardrobe, I mean, right? It's GQ. It's GQ. But here's how he starts it. No one on television looks or sounds like Natasha Leone with her raspy 1940s bartender voice, big curls, and New York-specific sense of cool. <laughs> I couldn't have described her better. 1940s bartender <laughs> voice. It's I, so true. She, I would have totally had a crush on her and if uh if this girl is in like you know if like you know or like college you're in college this girl walks into a class you're instantly you're like yeah it, okay but i'm never gonna ask her out because i'm not cool enough because i'm not cool enough look <laughs> I, I i i think this is where a lot of the the engagement for me uh in a murder in a serial murder mystery series comes from and natasha does that so well she i come back to watch every episode 
because of the character of Charlie. Yes. Right? And she performs that character. This is someone that you want to hang out with. This is someone that that this character um, engages people and becomes immediately friends with anyone and everyone that she interacts with. Right? And I think it's such a unique aspect of her character. Let, let, let's compare her to, to like a Sherlock Holmes. Right? Sherlock Holmes is just a dick. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and that's fine. Yeah. But there's, there's this like ability to him. Yeah. Whereas Charlie Kale is just so awesome. You want to hang out with her. You want to sit down and just hang out. She's she's a personable individual. She like, you know, you, she has these little quirks and things that like who, she's got the the muscle car and then like this, you know, uh, because you know her voice, but also like her being ju- you know polite, but also just like real when she calls bullshit yeah and it's like this weird quirk that everything when you see, when new characters are introduced they're always kind of like huh you know and i just it's just it's just this it's just such a fun i don't know if ryan johnson when he wrote this was thinking natasha leon i think so i, was, but I think he, oh yeah like to me i'm like this man he probably watched russian doll <laughs> and was like I need to write my thing. I, I'm over here. I'm like, this woman needs something to, to like, to give her. I need to give her a gift. Yeah. Because we would, we would kill it. And, and she's, she's an executive producer on this. Yeah, she is. Um, and, and I think this is, this is what happens when you have a great director, writer with an awesome actor build a project together from, from scratch. And kudos to freaking Peacock. Yeah. Cause like, what do they got? Yeah, <laughs> other than poker face. How, how this did? How this did not end up on Netflix? Freaking! I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Because because Netflix owns all of the all of the Knives Out characters and 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 the distribution for that. Russian Doll on Netflix, right? Right. Ryan John, like they already had a partnership. Like they they have a partnership with both, and she's in Orange Is the New Black, right? Oh yeah. Like, how this did not. And the how did they lose it? Did they just yeah. like Ryan and only not only that, but like how did like some other in like how did HBO not get this? Yeah, you know like Warner like whatever happened. I want to know the story behind this. This is, this is actually yeah. I want to know how how did you get you didn't Peacock, think about this? How did you, you get this? About this? No, I just oh, dude, it's just clicking to the me whole right now. Time, I'm like how how like where did P, did like Ryan Johnson pitch this out and like they were like no our slate our slate is full right now and Peacock be like. You know, we got nothing going on except for this Dan Brown thing. Um, <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> the Yeah, the, you know, it's not Vinci Code. It's, uh, it's, what's uh, his name? Uh, yeah, it's, the, it's, it's like... Yeah, the, it's... it's Lang, Lang, Langford? No, that's... Yeah, his, that's it's the... Language. What's it called? It's it's the Lost Symbol, I think. The Lost Symbol, yeah. yeah. I haven't even finished it. You haven't? No. Did you? I, I haven't even started it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think I'm like on episode four or five, maybe, and I just I kept losing interest. I think part of it is because like I did it on a trial, so there's that whole situation. Oh, okay. So I didn't like finish it. I think I had a little. I think, um, I can't, I'm not gonna give my full thoughts because I haven't finished it. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I want to be. I want to give it fair thought. I want to get it fair. Sure. Fair setup. It was pretty decent. I just I think that I think they might have released it on an episode basis. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and I think that's what pissed me off. Hmm. Is I just wanted to freaking go. Well, so was this, right? But I, I binged this. Yeah, I mean, I, I binged it. I waited for it to come out um, all, and then I, I just watched it all in one week. Where I enjoyed, I think had I seen it week to week, it would have still engaged me. Yes, I was going to say that. Because of, of, of Charlie and, and the premise of it all. Let's let's get into the subverting of this. of, of what Why, once again, Ryan Johnson is a king of... Uh, of his of of movie magic, yeah, to yeah. like the like non literal sense of movie magic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the like the movie magicness of magic, yeah, yeah. Look, this is this is this is not a whodunit. This is not a whodunit. This is not a whodunit. I I we think it is from the first episode. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this first episode because we kind of like okay, what how are we gonna how are we breaking this down? Are we gonna go through our favorite episodes and kind of talk about stuff? Um, what do we want to talk about? Because like each episode is different. Each episode is very different. They all follow the same format that 
in the first act of each episode, we see the murder. We see who's done it. Yes. And it lays out the premise of, of what we're going to experience. And then we see everything happen from Charlie's, uh, not a, not point of view, but her her ties to the murder and and her living in, in I, I guess, in, in this scenario. I, I feel like, I actually think that it's more, and in, in less about her involvement, but like, that no matter where she goes, she ends up stumbling, because... In this first episode, we find out why she's at the at a casino. Yeah, right. She we were told this story by the uh, Sterling Junior. Sterling Junior, uh, played by what's his face, but uh, Adrian Brody. Oh yeah, Adrian Brody. I yeah. forget his name. Yeah, he's guy. so he's such a good villain. He, he uh, is. He is. He's just so good. Anyways, so Adrian Brody as uh, Sterling Junior telling the story about how she's got this job because she thinks she's gonna get fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that she rung up and mopped the floor with a whole bunch of these kind of low state games that were just on a string of like these like small town in Colorado and, and this whole situation. <laughs> right. And I think what I love about it is the setup of that one story because it set up the entire season of this, of this show. She's just traveling, trying to get away from what the, the events of the first episode, yeah, uh, which is that there was a big deal going. There was uh, a uh, there was a um, a I'm pretty sure it was like a prostitute or like a child, some sort of like ch- child trafficking situation yeah. with one of the the guests that was a big donor. Um, but there was also this heist that was trying to be taken by Sterling Jr. with all these other players uh, to make a name and that she was supposed to be in there to help uh, mop the floor and get mm-hmm. all this money. Mm-hmm. Through a series of events, things get discovered, people get killed, and she then, uh, Sterling Jr., jumps off the, the balcony. In order to avoid the confrontation of his, his father, father, of Sterling Sr. And that's how... That, which is such a great way to introduce the character of Senior. We haven't seen him. No. And we don't see him until the very last episode. Exactly. Right? That he has, he you feel his presence throughout the entire series, but that his son would rather kill himself than, than face his dad. And then he calls her at the end and she books it. She's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, and because like you do think it's a whodunit. Mm hmm. And then the, the ending happened. You're like, what did I, what is, what? My favorite part about the whole thing is that the second episode, uh-huh. because the second episode, you, you're expecting like a continuation. And it's not. But it's not. No. Yeah. And I freaking love it. I, I love that, that this weekly mystery or ep- weekly episode um, approach to it versus like a season long mystery, right? Have you watched True Detective? Um, so I've only watched, I think, two episodes. Okay, I, I, I've only seen like the the first, yeah, the two episodes of the first yeah. season, right? But it's but it's like one episode. It's like it follows one whole one whole mystery throughout that series. Yeah, or throughout that season, season. right? Um, I recently started watching Only Murders in the Building with Selena Gomez. Same thing, right? It's it's one murder for the entire season. Um, I think I got to like second episode. I I couldn't finish. Whereas this. It's a, here's here's the murder of the week, here's how it happened, and and I was watching an interview with Ryan Johnson. He he says this isn't a who done it. This is he calls it a how how to catch him. Oh, how okay? to catch him. And the whole idea of the show is we know who did it. We know how they did it. How are they gonna get caught? Why they did it? It's following Charlie's uh, point of view of how. So catch him. I would argue that it's not they don't, we don't always know who does it who's done it. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure we know. In episode 2 Night Manager, we know that the guy kills the guy at the mechanic shop kills um the guy at Subway. In episode 3, we know we we see so that happen. I thought cuz I I think that was the case, but then all of a sudden we there was like like I was like, oh, this we know who it is, but then they have a there's an episode that like 
again subverts our expectation of like oh we don't know who actually killed the the episode the the one the where they're like Kate or snowed in that one I, I think is kind of like did they kill the other girl well that's 20 the thing. years ago yeah all i'm saying like that was the whole thing is like i felt like oh we thought we had a pattern and then there wasn't a pattern like that was the thing that i think i loved is that like oh we know who it is we know who it is because like i think about the barbecue one did we we just get the opening sequence of the black guy saying i'm a murderer right but then in that first act though we see how it all happens we that's see true brother. you're right you're right you're right right i forget right i think i was thinking of just the opening sequences and stuff but we yeah you're right but yeah yeah so i mean with the, Wait, yeah, with, yeah you're with right those like 20 25 minutes we see it all yeah you're right you're right, right? and then then it goes into like how do we catch him yeah how, how how is she going to prove that they did the murder and i think it's such a unique he talks about how the he the the, the knives out well what was the what's Daniel? Oh, uh, uh, perf- or no. Uh, anyways, he says that the Knives Out movies are definitely more of a of a nod and a love to to the Agatha Christie books, right? Yeah, and, and those old movies. And then, but this is more Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. <laughs> Freaking. Uh, this is more of a of a nod and a call to Columbo. Did you ever watch Columbo? No. It's a show from like the seventies where it was this. It was a detective. This guy was a detective, and and every episode started with the murder, how it happened, who did it. I gotta watch Columbo. Dang it. And then and then and then the detective, and then and then the rest of the episode is uh, how the detective is gonna figure it out, out, right? And so he says, "Yeah, this is very definitely like this is a nod and a love to that show that I used to watch growing up." Dude, again, this is a wonderful case of like someone who's been inspired, taking it and making. Because I love the fact that it's not a police. I love with every fiber of my being the fact that this is not just like um, that she's not a detective yeah. and more importantly that she doesn't join the FBI and try, and try to help out to like this th- there's like this line like I love that there's like this thread as she goes throughout her like travels of trying to r- run away and p- be under the radar and yeah. whatever that she ha- ends up connecting with an FBI mm-hmm. but also kind of getting offered a job and her not accepting it because like it's always, they're always like, there's like a consultant and they're going to help out right. with like whatever. And I just freaking love that they didn't do that. Yeah, no, it, it's great. And I think it also speaks to her as a character. She She's solving these murders because of her moral compass. Um, but a moral compass that has been shaped by the first step, ep- like that has been solidified by the first episode. Because yeah. I don't necessarily think she had that moral compass prior to the first episode hmm. okay like not say she didn't have that more yeah, 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 yeah. but like it wasn't because, because there, wa- there wasn't a impulse like a like uh deep impulse to find out okay like her her gift was just a thing that she like thought oh, i'm gonna make some money with this right right and yet then it shifted into from making money into i i can't in good conscience leave this not answered answered this idea of like i've i just you know i just this funny thought came to me right (laughs) that i just have to you know i just i gotta ask this question right i want to know this sort of thing that she is impulsive to to know yeah yeah because she knows that this individual is lying in contrast like other detective characters whether it's sherlock holmes who who wants to solve it for the clout, maybe not the clout, but to prove that he's the smartest guy in the room. Correct. Or uh, Benoit Blanc, who's doing it because he has built a connection, a personal connection to the victims, or, or to the, or to yeah, to the victims. Or also or, for the the fact that he like he needs to be he needs to just constantly be solving something, right? Or to be entertained, like like yeah. he's he's the same set level of like he's so smart that like so many things are like boring, boring essentially, yeah. Whereas Charlie, yeah, she has this gift, and there's a there's she's doing it because of the moral compass, but because she's intrigued, she can't drop it. Yeah. She knows that she there's can't. yeah, it's a great way. Yeah, she she knows that someone's lying, and she just can't drop it. And it's such a great way to make us fall in love with this character, right? I 
I, I love it. And and again, did you did you at ever at any point where where tired were you ever tired of like the format of it? Do you know? I kind of thought I was going to. I was yeah. like, oh no! But everything in episode, I was like, what's going to happen now? How, how, what, are, what are we going to do? Well, how, how is she going to figure it out? Right? Yeah. Which also like the the creativity on the writer's part oh. on the different ways people can be murdered. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Killer. Which one is your favorite? Oh, I think my favorite like episode or or like murder. Oh, that's a good question. Uh. Okay, let's go with episode. No, let's go with murder first. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think my favorite murder. I really, I don't know. I really like the the rest in metal. <laughs> yeah. Um, which also, there's so much to talk about. Uh, I think I like that one just because, like, you're you're kind of annoyed by the kid to a degree like later we see like oh no like he's just passionate about music right and he went to juilliard like yeah this kid is great right um but i just think it was so dude subverting yeah whatever you think just okay everyone's thinking this what are we gonna do to not think that yeah like yeah always every episode i felt like there was just like the writers and ryan johnson being the showrunner of the show like, what would it have been like to be part of this the writing team for this? Because oh, yeah. I just think it would have been so fun. Mm-hmm. Every episode would have been just so fun. Not only that, but the actors that were playing in these in in all the episodes, some amazing actors coming in. Nick Nolte, um, Tim Meadows. Uh, I can't. I, uh, I what's the, uh, the uh, freaking? I forgot his name. Uh, he's in Inception, and in just Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt, right? Just a stacked cast. You're so stacked. My, my favorite episode though is the the retirement home one. <laughs> that I I think I might agree with you on that one. That is such a great episode. I love it just because you have these two older ladies who are just still uh, holding to their quote unquote moral compass. Uh, of thinking that they were right that the that yeah they were gonna kill a bunch of high schoolers but it's for the greater good to show right you know um to stick it to the man right and and it's i love the idea that they've gone away with it for the last like 40 years but then it finally catches up to them yeah and not only that but like i love that natasha is seeing them as like cool yeah like like the your perception as from what you see things, but then versus reality. And, and and it also, as a viewer, again, we saw them do the, the murder, how elaborate it was and how funny it was too, for going to the bathroom, <laughs> climbing on the outside. <laughs> so, so absurd. I love it. Uh, and then the gorilla and whatever. Um, but, but you, you know that they're the murders, obviously. Yeah, and you you also fall in love with the freaking characters. With the characters, you fall in love with the idea that that Charlie has created these these relationships with these murderers. Yeah, right. I I, I really loved that episode. I thought I thought it, uh, that's my favorite one. Okay, okay. What about you? What was your favorite death murder? Okay, my favorite murder. I think. Um. It might have been the movie when the, the Natasha Leons directed. Uh, oh, okay, the the Orpheus syndrome. The, yeah. Um, now I'm like, but what? Now I'm like, wait. He died. How did they kill her? How did she kill him? Well, there's actually two. There's murders. two murders in that one. Yeah, I was like, right? there's, there's she kills her husband, pushes he no he kills himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she kills Nick Nolte's character. Nick Nolte's character, but now I can't remember how he. By she poisons them, yeah, which makes them yeah, like yeah, yeah. Have, have like slow uh, death, yeah, right? and then, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but but I think part of it is not so much how he dies, but the fact that like her actions causes two individuals to die. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know if that was my favorite episode, but that was a good one. 
Um, I really enjoyed that. I think that there was there was I definitely felt I was really intrigued because I saw that Natasha uh, Leon actually directed that one, mm-hmm. and um, also I I don't know. There's something about that, like the fact that like uh, a person who was making a film to try to like get money ends up killing it, the actress, but then shuts out this master uh, monster creator. Um, yeah. I'm like, is there something to be said? Is is there something being said here to the industry at large? Uh, I don't know. But uh, there was, I don't know. I was like, what's happening here? Is there something that's being said towards industrial light light and magic? Because we know there's several VFX artists there who have... Did you ever see that documentary on, on Disney Plus about ILM? Really uh, I haven't I haven't watched it. It's on my watch list, but I don't go to Disney Plus very often. Oh, it's it's a really good docu series. No, I heard. Um, but yeah, we see how George kind of butted heads with some of the VFX artists and yeah, like went out of his way to like, you're not working on this project. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know? anyways, I, all I'm saying is like, is there something there? Like, you know, where are we going? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think my favorite episode. I think my favorite episode might have to be uh, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt one. The, the, oh, the Escape from... What was it called? Something Mountain. Escape from Shit Mountain. <laughs> yeah, Escape from Shit Mountain. <laughs> because at first it was Love Mountain. Exactly. She falls in love with this, <laughs> this freaking <laughs> image. I love that. I was loving so hard. <laughs> she falls in love with this guy after being on the run for like a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who lives in like a tent and Just, eating off the earth, yeah, right? This whole thing. And then freaking winter comes and it's like... I'm out of here. This sh- I can't get off this shit mountain. <laughs> I just, it's just so good. I also love, again, subverts. We, we, we're, okay, we're expecting to have someone be dead. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this whole scene. We find out that it's not, it's, it's her. Natasha's yeah. character. Yeah. She gets hit. She's she the one. Hit. She's the one that's not the one that's actually being uh, affected by this whole situation, yeah. right? Which again is just. I, I want to ask about that. Like, what is it about this series? And we've talked a little bit about it, but what is it about this series that does so well about engaging audiences and keeping them coming back? I have some thoughts. I, I think I need to process them a little bit. Will you, so will you go first? Yeah. I think, again, it's a burning expectations by showing us the murder, right? Like, I see it. I know how it was done. You've made me fall in love, not with the victim, but with Charlie, right? And I want her to succeed. I want I want justice to prevail, right? And a lot of times we don't see like the police coming in and like she solved it and she somehow gets the police involved and she takes off, right? Right. A lot of times we don't see the satisfaction of the of the murderer actually get handcuffed. This is something that stood out to me this time. Like why why did they choose to not like have police involvement have and not necessarily police involvement but like see the very end of like the the murderer actually get justice served or or someone or, or the police just handcuffing them why don't we see it i okay and but also like why am i okay with it okay i right? think i have some thoughts okay i was 100 percent with you because i'm what i think what what this what this is doing so well is that it's still playing with this urge of the we're interested with the murder. Mm -hmm. But it takes the mystery of the murder completely out and it introduces into what really what we're all care about. How they get away with this stuff. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is not a murder mystery. No. Okay, this is not, this is not a, a detective, like you know these detective shows that like we have in like like Bones or or uh, Castle or all these ones where there's like something happens, a murder, they solve it, and they go from there and like you know mm-hmm. rinse and repeat to a degree, right? Yeah. Obviously, those I have a huge respect for a lot yeah, of the yeah, shows. Of course, I love Bones to death. Uh, the series was phenomenal, but a lot of times 
it's not necessary like they go and sell these murders but a lot of it is to help build characters this is what tv has always done really good at mm -hmm. but the problem with this is that it then becomes repetitive and you know okay that like criminal minds yeah. okay they go through they've had freaking 27 something something so i don't know <laughs> too many seasons for me to commit to okay but they go through these these the the scenario and they've done it for many years part of it's because the characters part of it's because like there's crazy people in the world right but for this i think that we're in it because we want we're okay with not having any sort of set effect because it's not justice in our minds we're finding justice because she knows what's happened okay she's found yeah. the truth <laughs> she's found the truth the quote truth her sense of under us having an understanding that she has a flaw a character gift flaw she would curse mm -hmm. uh, to know that when people are lying that she knows and yeah. she calls it out yeah right yeah. so we know from the get-go that this character has this uh this thing and we've built this understanding that she knows yeah that uh -huh. there's this truth that when she calls it she knows that there's something wrong right even and so that's why it comes to the thing is that we know that who's killed the person, you know, and so even with that, we still want justice. We don't have any justice knowing who killed. We have justice when uh, Charlie's character has gone through the situation, has found a connection, and then can't yet feel like she's solved the nagging feeling of like. Something is not right here, and I need to know why. Yeah, I love that. It's it's the it's the journey to find truth, right? Do you say it so much better than I? I'm over here like rambling. <laughs> no, 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 but it's the journey to find truth. Imagine, if, imagine if Charlie's character had the ability to detect truth instead of detecting lies. It's not the same. It's not the same. Right, it's not the same, and 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 I think it, it it makes it less engaging and a bit boring, right? Absolutely. The ability that they chose to the the decision, the fact that they chose to have her detect lies, yes, and for her to want to then pull on that thread so that she can then find truth and not necessarily find justice, because because in a lot of them we there is justice found, yeah, but in a lot of them or in a couple of them. There's not, you don't actually find true, like, closure mm -hmm, in some of mm -hmm. them. Yeah. It's just truth. And, yeah, and, and, and going back to the one that she directed, that Natasha Leon directed, right, the, the murderer, she ends up just jumping off a building. Yeah. Right? So, like, the justice wasn't broad in a legal sense. Right. Justice was brought in that the truth was then revealed on what she had done 30 years ago when she did these last two these with these two murders, right? I, I love that. I, I, I love this theme of like a journey of finding truth. I love that Ryan Johnson and only Ryan Johnson can do this. Writes these characters with these little quirks and it's believable. Going back to Knives Out with yeah. Anna Yes. With uh, Ana de Armas character, uh, Marta, was that? Yeah. yeah. The fact that she, she... She couldn't lie. She couldn't lie because if she does, then she starts throwing up. <laughs> uh, the, the other character in, in Glass Onion, the fact that you give her alcohol and she just becomes this aggressive in character, very direct character. These little character uh, characteristics or attributes... That only Ryan Johnson can do, and and in this case, a character that can detect lies, a okay. human that lie detector. Okay, there's this theme mm -hmm. of like you you just shared. Why do you think having this tr this in a Ryan Johnson film mm -hmm. or series now, he finds it needful to have a character that is some sort of compass per se okay why i mean it's a murder mystery we want to because it's 100 knives out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right 
just it's like on this other end where it's not Benoit Blanc, and he doesn't have this like a, like this individual. You know, you know. Anyways, I just think I'm like, what is it? Why why is it that we have this this sort of compass character mm -hmm. in his mysteries? I think it gives us it gives us as the viewers a <clears throat> a way to engage with the main character. Look, let's look at let's look at uh, Poker Face, right? If if Charlie didn't have this ability, what would be? How do you keep the story going? How do you keep her? How do you engage her into? She's not a detective, right? So it's not like she's being sent from case to case to case, right? It's because she has the ability that then draws her to want to find the truth, right? And it's such a great way. Again, going back to what you said earlier, how fun would it have been to be a writer in this? To say, we have this character who just can detect lies. How are we going to get her into these positions? And then you just come up with these crazy scenarios, yeah. right? I think that's what makes it, as a writer, so fun to do. And as a viewer for me to continue to cheer on, to come back and tune in and watch the show, right? Bones, CSI, whatever these shows, they're great. They're, they're entertaining, but they don't, they, they, and that's fine. There's a place for, for a show like that. But we've talked about this. It's very hard in, in, in the world of streaming with so much content to engage us. And this show does it and I think it all relies on the fact that they wrote uh Charlie in, in this manner. Yeah. I mean can we gotta talk about Sterling Senior? Because I feel like Ron Perlman. Ron dude, that man. Dude, dude I freaking love him so much. E even though I binged this when he calls her on the first episode, I had the urge to be like, who who is it? Who who's playing Sterling Senior? And I didn't I did not look him up on IMDb. I, w I wanted to be surprised at the end, and I'm glad I didn't because I was like, "It's Ron Perlman!" Like I was so glad that I didn't look it up. He's it, it uh, well worth it. Yeah, he does. Uh, Perlman is. I mean, I just I love him every single time. He's like some sort of like mob boss, like you know, like I mean, uh, in uh, Sons of Anarchy, in uh, I think in Hell. Uh, yeah, Hellboy, right? Yeah, he's Hellboy. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't know his voice. His, his voice is who he is. I love. I actually think I might like the last episode quite a bit. It's my least favorite. <laughs> I want to hear why it's your favorite, though. I think maybe it's because of the like the 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 like slight payoff, but then like yeah, okay. So. The first episode, we're introduced into her. We're introduced to to, to um, Charlie. We're introduced to her, where she works. We're kind of giving her. We get. We're, we get the setup of her, like reading about all these horrible things that have happened, mm -hmm. and then her friend, who then is has an abusive boyfriend, and who then later not only has her boyfriend killed, but she gets killed because yeah. she finds this somewhat like trafficking child trafficking ring of some kind yeah. um anyways she heard this thing of she's like well you what do you why do you read that why do you read that you're never going to do anything about it set up yeah set up okay then leads to her journey of this whole thing then leads to every single episode of her feeling this impulsive need to like do something about this thing that mm -hmm. she knows that something's wrong with okay the last episode, I feel like, is this, uh, like, ending payoff of her f being faced to this individual who, her his his own son, was so terrified, yeah, that would jump off the freaking the hotel, yeah, and kill himself, and yet he's proposing a deal, which I love. Yeah. Again, subverting expectations. Okay. Um, any other thoughts that you have? Not that I can think of right okay. now. I just didn't like, here's what I didn't like about it. I just felt, lo loved the interaction of, of, of Sterling Senior. Is with, it the ending? It's the end. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I just felt like 
they spent way too much time trying to introduce what the premise is going to be in season two. And I, not not that I was expecting this to be a limited series. But it kind of would have been better. It kind of would have been better. And just, and just introduce what season two will be in season two. Yeah. Just like you did here in, in that first episode, right? She gets pulled into this, gets thrown into it, and has to go on, on the run. And I just, I just, they introduce this bigger mafia syndicate, right? Um, this voice that's talking to her on the phone. Uh, and, and I was just kind of, it, 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 it this pulled is, me, it pulled me away from the rest of the, of the series. I think it's because they, they did everything through the entire series to not have this feeling of like repetition. And then the last episode, they have the repetition with the phone call and mm. the feeling of like needing to be on the run still. Yeah. And, and to me, like to a degree, I also feel like maybe this is just me. Like I, I've talked about how like I, I, just, I don't watch a lot of like TV series because I feel yeah. like it's just con- too much of a commitment and they're just constantly pulling things to drag series. Not that I feel like they're doing that here, but I just like a good solid resolution. We, yeah. get, we get that, right? Yeah, but 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 at the same time, like let me let me just sit with it. It's, you don't have to put all these. I mean, like the lot, like that. I feel like that whole episode is just set up for season two. Yeah. Well, I think they could have. They pr- they probably could have. Uh, they probably could have done the episode and had it play out exactly the same. Yeah. The difference is is not have the phone call at all. Mm-hmm. And then the first episode of the second season be this whole like whole other thing where like we get we we reveal that she's has other she has this other person that is perhaps yeah. pull, like pulling some sort of like causing some sort of ruckus in the situation that she's in. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I would have liked better. I just felt like it was just like I'm like all right. I don't. For some reason, I feel like Ryan Johnson like got sick, and uh, the the studios came in and were like, "Okay, we want this to happen," and then he comes back and they're like, "Oh, we finished it," which again, like, I'm not saying he did, yeah, but, but if that's the case, like, I'm glad that the studio saw how good this is, and they're like, "No, we we're ready for a second season." Yeah, yeah. right. I appreciate it, but it was I I don't believe for a second that Charlie would have left that diner, got in the call from this lady, and would have not turned around and been like, hey, FBI agent, who I've built a relationship with, let, me, let me put this on trust her. her. And he trusts her, and, and, and he says, you know, like, we have this relationship, right? Um, but then it becomes the same thing that, like, we we love, but that we don't want, which is her being, like, a consultant in this ex- sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. So that's why I think you don't do that phone call scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like they shouldn't have done it because I, 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 there's no way that she literally walks out the diner, gets a call. She, of course, she would have turned around and been like, the fact that in the first episode she emailed FBI at no. FBI.com. <laughs> I love that she just I emails know. these random fake emails <laughs> or not real emails and hopes and thinks that it's going to get solved. I mean, right? to be fair, I mean, like, it feels like it should be something like that. <laughs> They should have a redirect. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but like the fact that she knows when to call the authorities, right? When she's on the run, and but now she has a good relationship with the FBI. Of course, she. I, I don't believe it. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember. Did I say it was my favorite? I don't know. I you I, did say it was your favorite. I did. I did. I did. I like maybe just because I like. I kind of like the, the closure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the other one I really like the barbecue one. Barbecue one. Uh, I will say this. The. the one yes, we've talked about like it's it's a weekly episode, but how diverse the murders are, how diverse um, the region and and the characters, right? We have we have a murder take place at a, at a barbecue stop. Yeah, we have a murder take place amongst like amateur NASCAR racers and the rivalry they have. Yeah, the 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 movie VFX, like uh uh like. Some famous guy in Colorado, right? Or like a, a guy who's wealthy that like 
built his name in, in, in the community. Yeah. We have the, the like, no, uh, a random uh, stop in America that you can never remember what the name is, but you stopped there once because you, you need to fill up on gas. So you fill up on gas. I love just the different settings, the different characters, the different areas of the country that she's, you know, going and yeah. hiding it and like giving us a, a glimpse of what life is like for these characters. The the one that I which I really liked again like the 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 washed out metal Dude, that pro- that might be. I'm, I think I, I just remembered that sh- the song that they're singing is about <laughs> Charlie. What is it? What uh Oh, what is it? What the song? Something girl uh uh merch girl. Merch girl. Merch girl. <laughs> And like realizing that that's like that payoff was so good. Again, like it's just there's different random people and that you know exist and live. Maybe maybe what it is is that the the reason why I think the last episode was, in because I was pissed with that. I think too. I'm not I'm not yeah, here yeah. to tell you that I didn't. Yeah. I was I was upset. Yeah. I think to me it was the fact that like. We get payoff to the first episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's something to me that was like, I appreciated that there was like a closure. A closure and a satisfaction. Right. Yeah. I hate that they they cheapened the series. By by introducing this other thing. They should have just let it be, let it be complete and have us like an extinct extraction to where we didn't know if we were going to get a second one. Yeah. And all of a sudden we get a second one. Yeah. Second season. And we're like, yes, I'm here for it. Exactly. Right. But, um. Anyway, anyways, what's, that's that's that, that was my only criticism with the entire series was that last episode. A- any other thoughts? Um, I, you know, I, I want to talk about the fact that like Natasha Leone as Charlie, she, I mean, I'd watched Russian the first episode of Russian Doll. I haven't finished it. Did you watch how many episodes you've seen? I think I've seen the first two episodes of season one. Yeah, and uh, I thought she would, like I enjoyed Natasha Leone. I enjoyed Natasha Leon and her depiction of Charlie. I feel like she just really embodied it. I think, like you said, I think her and Ryan Johnson really just fell lock and step. Mm-hmm. That they were like they were in it together to make a, tell really interesting stories for every episode. I love that there was humor, there was satire, there was this because of who Charlie's character is. She calls bullshit when there's bullshit, <laughs> and. I love how uncomfortable and how taken aback every single everyone time. is. Everyone is. Yeah, it's it's again such a character detail, uh, an attribute to the character. If 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 Benoit Blanc was just calling bullshit for for bullshit's sake, yeah, but for it ben- would it wouldn't it wouldn't land. No, like I love that that she's not a detective. I love that she she. That she's not like the smartest person in the room, mm-hmm. right? She, all all she is is someone who has this flaw to be able to say, "I will." Something's not right here. Something's not and right. And I need here. to ask questions. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yep. And I need to ask questions why because we see that she has made a connection with the victim. Oh yeah, you're right. And right. That's that's really what comes because like I would totally be that if I had that flaw. Right. I would be that person. Wait, why did my friend just die? And I'm sensing that you're lying, right? Why are you lying? Yeah. Why, why is it that you lied? The Actually, you know, I take it back. The play. The play murder. Mm. That one was a freaking really good episode. That was a really good episode. That was I take it back. I can't believe I just literally at the end of this episode remembered that, <laughs> that play. But that one was probably the... I love... Oh, that's such a good episode. It's a great episode. Yeah, that one was really good. With amazing actors. Again, this the cast that they brought in for this, I think they just, to me, I think people, they're like, oh, Ryan Johnson's in this show? Yeah, I want to go have fun with freaking Ryan Johnson and do some sort of mystery thing. Right? Um, Quick question. Okay. Quick question. Who do you want to see in season two, actor-wise? Oh, uh, that's a wonderful question. I would love to see. I would love to see Henry Cavill. Oh, I think Henry Cavill would be a fun one. I would also love to see. Uh, 
I was gonna say Harrison Ford, but he's in the other mystery show, so he was not gonna do it. I want Chris Evans. I want I want Chris Evans. I want a a Knives Out reunion. I want Chris Evans. You, yeah, Chris Evans or even freaking Daniel Craig. Uh, you know who I would I would love to have? Um, the guy who plays Spock. I just saw him in another show. Okay, and I just think that. I would love to have him see him in a TV show. It, the, the, he'd be fun. Uh, a good female, uh, Rachel McAdams. Oh, she would be fun in these. I feel like it would be, or or Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick, yeah. I feel yeah. like Anna she Kendrick. She has that quirkiness to her. I feel like Anna Kendrick and Natasha Leon would like just, they would slay on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ryan Johnson, make this happen, man. <laughs> We're giving you great ideas here. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode. Um, we want to know uh, if you have seen Poker Face, who would you like to see in the second season in the cast? Leave in the comments below. If you've listened this far, one, you're the real MVP. Please, j- you know, we'd love it if you would give us, um, you know, rate us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Spotify um, or subscribe to us on YouTube. Share, please, with friends, coworkers, whoever you want. Yep. Also, this is our 25th episode. We did it. Si se puede. Si se puede. 25th episode. Thank you for listening. Again, we couldn't do this without your guys' comments and and engagement with us. We're Uh, in it for the long haul. We're in it for the long haul. Come back next week. We are talking Dead Poet Society. In in in, in remembrance uh, of all those who are returning to school. Of all those who are returning to school. We'll see you in the next one. Later. Later.